Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. So last time we talked about... Uh, things. <laughs> we talked about uh, solving equations that weren't quadratic equations. So in particular we solved um, some absolute value equations and we also solved uh, some equations that had radicals in them. Uh, but the main, the main uh, idea that I want to draw out from that time was we were talking about equations and the operations you can do upon them which preserve the truth. So with equations you can add the same number or subtract the same number from both sides and that always preserves the truth. If the equation was true to begin with then it will be true after you do that. And uh, besides adding or subtracting the same number um, you could also multiply almost always. So we have to say almost always because what? It, well there's an exception. So so, you can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by almost any number except zero. Right? Zero is not, do, doing so is not truth preserving. Okay? Which is to say you could, you could modify the truth if you do that. Uh, well, so now we're in section 2.7. We're in section 2.7 and it's called something like linear and absolute value inequalities. So, so uh, for example, the equation 13 equal to 14, that's false. Okay, but we could have the inequality 13 less than 14. Is that true? It is true. Okay, so uh, just like inequalities have their truth-preserving operations, uh, j just like equalities have their truth-preserving operations, so do inequalities. So, for example, if we have a less than b, so suppose, supposing that this is true, or, or, or false, either one, then you can add the same number to both sides uh, B. B plus C. And the truth is preserved. So, for example, 13 less than 14. True or false? This is true. And then, if we add, uh, say, 8 to both sides, 13 plus 8 less than 14 plus 8. Well, this one would be 21, and that one would be 22, and the statement would still be true. Similarly, uh, similarly, 5 less than 2. Is this an inequality? Yes. yes. Is it true or false? false? It is false. So if we add, say, 1 to both sides, It's still false. Okay, so, so adding the same number to both sides of an inequality preserves the truth. Okay, the story of multiplication is more complicated. So now, uh, well, A multiplied by C less than B multiplied by C. So now, we're doing this to both sides. We're doing this to both sides. And we're still going to require, we're still going to require that c is not zero because of, this, of the same reasons that we need that for equations. Uh, but there's going to be yet another requirement, and I'm going to write it in this box as soon as it becomes clear. So, uh, for example, 13 less than 14. This is true. And if we multiply both sides by 3, so 13 multiply 3 less than 14 multiplied by 3. Well, 13 multiplied by 3, that's 39. And 14 multiplied by 3, that's 42. So is it true? It's true. So you multiply an inequality, both sides, same number, 
um, by, by three anyway, the truth is preserved. Okay. So now I want you to consider, what if, what if we do it like this? What if we do 13 less than 14? 13 less than 14. And now suppose that we multiply both sides by negative 3. OK. So if we multiply both sides by negative 3, then the left-hand side is negative 39. And the right-hand side is negative 42. So this inequality that we started with is true. How about this last one? False. It's false. It's false. So, so the story about inequalities is slightly different. Because to preserve the truth, not only must C not be 0, but what else? It has, it has to be positive. So the truth is only preserved when, when, the, when, when C is, is positive. But if, as if that weren't enough, the story is actually, there's a slight uh, other wrinkle in here. And that is that uh, 3 AC, so A multiplied by C, and now I'm going to write this. Notice that this is, the f this is the first one that I've written going in that direction. BC, when C is not 0, and C is negative. So let me explain what I mean. So if we take some inequality that's true, say 2 less than 5, this is true. So now let's multiply both sides by negative 8. We'll multiply both sides by negative 8. Then what is the new left-hand side? Negative 16. And what is the new right-hand side? Negative 40. And my question to you is, is which of these two sides is the greater? The left one is greater. So, so, well, when you multiply by, when you multiply by a negative number, in order for the truth to be preserved, you must flip the direction of the inequality. Okay. Interesting. So inequalities have this slightly different game where you've got to do different things depending on what you're multiplying by as positive or negative. OK. So now I have a question then. If that's the case with inequalities, why is it not the case with equations? So let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question. And there's something wrong with my question but I want you to tell me what's wrong with my question. Why is it? Why is it that when you take an equation that's true and you multiply both sides by a negative number, say negative 5, why is it that you don't have to change the direction of the equation? Because equations don't have directions. Because equations don't have directions, right? They don't. Inequalities do. Inequalities do. And the fact that they have a direction part of that shows up when you're doing this multiply business. Equations don't have a direction because if A is B, then B is A. It doesn't matter what side you put them on. Okay, but inequalities do, they're anti-symmetric, because if A is less than B, then B less than A is false. Only one of those can be true. Okay, so that's interesting. And four, if, if it is the case that both the left-hand side and the right-hand side are positive, if that's true, and furthermore, this inequality is true, so if they're both positive and A is less than B, then you can compute reciprocals 
of both sides. So for example, what is the reciprocal of 2 thirds? 3 halves. And what's the reciprocal of 7? 1 over 7, etc. So you could, you could compute reciprocals of both sides, 1 over a and 1 over b. And again, what's going to happen? It, the, the, inequal, the direction of the inequality changes. Okay. If this seems surprising to you, then I'd like for you to consider, how about 2 less than 10? Is this true? It is true. What is the reciprocal of 2? Half, right? And what is the reciprocal of 10? 1 over 10. And of these two possibilities, which is the larger? Half is the larger. OK. So these are the new rules when we're dealing with inequalities. OK. So now let's solve some. So I'm going to solve these in two ways. On the left side, I'm going to do purely algebraic consideration, and on the right side, geometric consideration. So please solve, uh, say, 2x minus 1 less or equal to uh, 5. So if this was an equation, what would you do? Yeah, if, and if you wanted to isolate x, you could add 1 to both sides. So we'll add 1. What's the new left-hand side? 2x. And what's the new right-hand side? 6. Okay, good. Then what? Divide by 2. But now, after the previous page, I'm all antsy about division. Is this even is this even okay to do this? To divide by two? Yeah. Is this the one that reverses the direction of the inequality? No. Which one is that? If you if you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, yeah. But this one's positive, so the direction is preserved. So what's the new left hand side? X and the new right hand side? Three. And then would you please write that in interval notation? OK, so how do you do that? So I'm looking for the round and square parentheses things. Uh huh. Very good. Okay, so any question about this? this? This is a purely algebraic consideration. Now I want to show you what this is saying geometrically. Okay, so consider, consider 2x minus 1 less or equal to 5. So I'm going to say that this is the, the left-hand side is the red thing, and the right-hand side is the green thing. And specifically, what we're going to consider is that I'm going to say y is equal to 2x minus 1. And I'm going to plot this, and I'm going to do so in red. And then this is the green thing, and I'm going to say y is equal to 5. So we're going to plot both of those. I'm going to plot the, the red and the green. So if we were to plot the red, what would you see? So what kind of thing is this? Is this like a smiley face when you plot it, or what? OK, good. It's a line. 
So, so uh, be because lines are, are somewhat simple, you can tell me, well, what's the slope of this line? Two. Two. So it's going to be sloping up fairly, fairly quick. And then what, is this, what does that number mean? That's this y-intercept. So, so it's going to cross the y-axis, and it's going to do so below the origin. So the red thing is going to look like this, more or less. <coughs> okay, so this is, this is the plot of y is 2x minus 1. Okay. Then uh, what's the green thing when you plot it? What will it be? Horizontal. It'll be a horizontal line. And will it be above or below the origin? It'll be above the origin. So it'll be somewhere like up here. So this is y is 5. OK. <coughs> now, we have, we have the two lines. And my question to you is, is do they ever intersect, the red and the green? They do, right? They intersect right there. They intersect right there at that point. And my question is, is what input x do we need to give to, to get to that point? What input gives you that? Well, it would be whatever, whatever that x value is right there. And what is that x value? It's 3. It's 3 because at x is 3, what is this one? y is 5. And that's what this one is too. This is 3. OK, now, what I want you to consider is we've got the red thing, we've got the green thing. And what this is saying in this picture, this one is saying below. If it, was, if it was turned around the other way, then it would be saying above. So what we want, what we want is in this picture, where is red below green? Where is red below green? So that is to say, what, what x values produce y values so that red is below green? So how about right here? So this is some x value that's less than 3, right there. And here's the red value right there, and there's the green value right there. Is the red value below the green value? It is. It is. So that must be part of the solution. That must be part of the solution. Similarly, how about over here at some value to the right, some value to the right of 3? Which one is below and which one's above? Green is below and red is above. Is that what we wanted? No, we wanted red below green. So do you observe that it's where they cross that the actual, that, that, that the situation between them changes? Here they're touching. To the, on the right side, red is above. On the left side, red is below. We want to know where is red below green? So tell me, where is red below green? Right, everything to the left of three. All of this. This is the solution. So do, is 3 itself part of the solution? Yes. Why is 3 itself part of the solution? Right. So really, because it says less or equal, this, this means something like below or even touching. OK, so then. 3 is filled in. Do you observe that this is exactly that? OK. Good. Any question about this? Any question about this? Let's do another one. So how about, how about um, 3? minus 2x um, less, we'll do strictly less than, uh, 
How about seven? <clears throat> Okay, so now again I'm going to do the same thing, algebra on the left, geometry on the right. So what algebraically should we do? Subtract 3 from both sides. So the new left hand side would be negative 2x, the new right hand side would be 4. Now what? Ah, right, divide by negative 2. So in the first place, for inequalities, is division by negative 2 permissible? Yeah. Yes, but what comes with it? Changing the direction. So the new left-hand side would be x, the new right-hand side would be negative 2, and the direction of the inequality will be reversed. So any question about this? So now please write this one in interval notation. Yes? I agree. For both. Yeah, because, because we could, you could look at division by negative 2. You could say that that's the same as multiplication by negative half. So if it goes for the 1, it must go for both. OK, so in interval notation, what is this? Very good. Do we include do we include negative 2? No. No. Okay, good. So again, it's the exact same story as before. Uh, really. So 3 minus 2x less than 7. So again, I'll say that, that this thing is the red thing. This other one is the green thing. I'll take the left-hand side and say, well, I'm going to consider the equation y is 3 minus 2x, and I'll plot it in red. I'll take the right-hand side and do what with it? What, what equation will I consider? Y is 7, and I'll plot it in green. So now I'll plot both of these. OK. Well, y is 3 minus 2x. This will be a line. It's a line. Uh, what's its y-intercept? 3. So in particular, it's going to go through the y-origin, uh, sorry, the y-axis above the origin. Okay, it'll be above the origin. And then how does it slope? negative 2, which means it's going to be going down. So it's going to look, the red one, will look something like this. So y is 3 minus 2x. And then how does the green one look? horizontal line above the origin it, is it above is it above this intercept it is right because what's this intercept 3 so it's got to be above that one it's got to be above that one so it's got to be up here and then my question is as well do the red and the green intersect they do that's the same as asking you know when, when, is this, when is the corresponding equation ever true? Well, right there. What input value makes that, causes that intercept? What input value? Negative two. Negative 2 causes that. OK. Now, using the words red and green and above, below, and between, and everything like that, what is this thing? Red, below, green. Okay. The sloped line, below, the horizontal line. So where, where is this true? 
according to the picture. To the right of negative 2. Because if you have a look, we want to know where red is below. So for this particular input right there, for that particular input right there, is red below green? No, it's above green. Red and green are the same right there at input negative 2. And red is below green, for example, there, and also every point to the right of negative 2. So can you see it's all the points to the right, negative 2. Okay. So it's all of these. And th then my question is, is, do we pick up negative 2 or do we not? Does it come with it? It does not come with it. Why not? Right. So this one, in that sense, means something like strictly below. Touching is not, not enough. Have to, have to be below. OK, now, it's usually at this point where I have everybody in a good panic. OK, so, so here's, here's the deal. Um, a large fraction of you, maybe even every one of you, is saying something like, wow, this seems a lot easier <laughs> okay, to handle, right? Look at it. OK, and that this is a little bit more unwieldy. OK, I won't even object. But you're going to have to be able to do it both ways because I'm going to specifically test you both ways. OK, so an another matter, <laughs> another matter. And you, then, then, it, then that just raises the question, why would he do that? <laughs> why, why would he do that? OK. Well, for every student and for every concept, so, so you know, we could, if we were to list out 100 students, uh, sorry, 100 concepts, and we've got 250 <laughs> students, that's a lot of pair, pairing ups, isn't it? So for every student, for every concept. My experience tells me that each individual student, when they understand something, they either understand it in a way that is primarily algebraic or primarily geometric, one or the other. And furthermore, my experience tells me that it's about 50-50. About half of students, when they understand something, understand it better this way, and the other half the other way. So the purpose of this class, besides getting you to think sort of in a sequence, carry out a list of instructions, and, and think concretely in that way, besides that, an objective of this course is for you to be able to talk about these things with other, with your colleagues. And I'm telling you that it's 50-50. If you like this way, 50-50 chance the other person that you're talking to likes it that way. So if y'all are going to get things figured out and convince each other, then you're going to have to be able to talk in both ways. Okay? Good. Let's do another one. After that pep talk. Okay, how about, how about let's, let's up the, the game a little bit. How about uh, negative 3 is less than 2x uh, minus 5 is less than or equal to 9. Hmm. So now, this is like a super special one, right? Instead of having just two positions, left and right, now it's got three positions, uh, left, middle, and right. And the, so let's solve this algebraically. Uh, if, it, if the inequality were just this, if it was just that part, then what would you do? You'd add five. And what if the inequality were just that? What would you do? You'd add 5. Well, this is what we're going to do. But we have to do it to all positions now. Add 5 to all positions. So add 5, add 5, add 5. So supposing we do that, what is the new left position? And the new middle position? And the new right position? Very good. And then again, 
Supposing that it was just this inequality, what would you do? Divide by 2. And supposing it was just this inequality, what would you do? Divide by 2. So this is what we'll do. But we have to do it to all positions. Okay. Well then, is this the one that reverses the direction? No. So what's the new left position? The new middle position? And the new right position? Very good. So now, would you please write this in interval notation? So what is it? Parentheses at the, at the 1, yes. To 7 with the brackets. Very good. Any question about this? <clears throat> so now we want to do the exact same thing, but with a picture. OK. So now we have three positions. Negative 3 less than 2x minus 5 less or equal 9. So I'll take the left position and I'm going to consider what equation corresponding to the left position. Y is negative 3. And what equation will I consider from the middle position? Very good. And what equation will I consider from the right position? Y is 9. So then I'll color the left position in red, the middle position in green, and the right position in blue. Okay. Well, what's this one? Horizontal line. Is it above or below the origin? Below. below. So it's something like this. OK. The green one. What is it? Sloped line. Is it sloping up or down? Up, in particular, with slope 2. What is its y-intercept? Negative 5, so that means it's below the origin. It's below the origin, but is it above or below the red one? The, the intercept. It's below, right? Because, because the green one's intercept is, is at negative 5. So the green one has to go through the y-axis, but it has to do so below that one. OK, so then from here we slope. This one is y is 2x minus 5. And then what is y is 9? It's a horizontal line, and it's, it's up at 9, right? So it's like way up high. So I'll draw it up here. OK, so we drew, the, we drew the three parts. And my question is, is using the words red, green, and blue, and other descriptive words like above, below, and between, and everything like that. Would someone please pr pronounce this in plain English? Red below green. Which is itself below blue. Or how about this? How about green between red and blue? How about that? 
so, so, there's only one region that's between the red and the blue, right? So, so, <clears throat> really what you need to mark, really what you need to consider, is where do they intersect? Where do they intersect? So in particular, where do, do red and green intersect? They do. They intersect right here. And then the question is, is well, what input, what x input causes them to, interse to intersect? The input 1 causes it. Because if you, if you plug in 1 into that, x is 1, then you get negative 3. That causes them to intersect. Okay, how about do green and blue intersect? They do, right here. And then the question is, is well, what value, what input x causes them to intersect? 7 does, because if you plug in 7, then you get 2 times 7, which is 14, minus 5 is 9. So, 7, right there. So now we are asking ourselves, where are they in the order that we want? So for example, for that input right there, for that input right there, the order is r green, then red, then blue. Is that the right order? Green, red, blue? No, that's not the right order. What's the right order? Red, green, blue. In this order, it's green, red, blue. How about right here? What's the order here from top, from bottom to top? Red, green, blue. Ah, so that's right. That's right. And then over here, this is red, <coughs> blue, green. Ah, so can you see that everywhere between these, inter these, these intersection points, that's what we're, we were looking for? Okay, so we want all the stuff in between them. And then the quest we have a question now. What about, the, what about the end points? What about 1 and what about 7? Do we want 1? No, we do not. Why do we not want 1? Yeah, this says strictly less than. So, so this is open. And then do we want 7? Yes, because it says less or equal. So we do pick up 7. Do you observe that that's exactly what we wrote over there? It's exactly the same thing. So now, any questions about this? Any questions? Oh, we're doing pretty good on time. <clears throat> okay, next. Did I miss something? Maybe I'm just going too fast. Okay. <clears throat> so now, we're going to consider uh, a case like this. How about the absolute value of, um, say, 2x minus 3 is less or equal to 10. And we're going to consider it again. We're going to consider it uh, algebraically and geometrically. OK. Well, let's think about this for a moment. Suppose, suppose I cover this up, and we forget exactly what's under there and we just give it a name, say we call it W, then would it be permissible, would it be true to plug in W is zero? Yeah, because what's the absolute value of zero? It's zero, and is zero less than 10? Sure. Would it be permissible to plug in, say, eight? Could you plug in an eight? That'd work. What's the biggest value you could possibly plug in? 10, right? 10 would work because absolute value of 10 is in fact less or equal to 10. But you couldn't plug in 10.1, that'd be far too much. Okay. Now, what about could you plug in negative 4? Would that be okay? It'd be okay because if I, w if I was covering up a negative 4, then the absolute value of it would be 4, which is less than 10, less, less or equal to 10. So could you plug in negative 9? Yeah, you could. 
What's the smallest number, number you could possibly plug in? Negative 10. So do you see that whatever it is that I'm covering up, so long as it's, on the one hand, greater than or equal to 10, uh, n greater than or equal to negative 10, and on the other hand, less or equal to positive 10, then it would be okay. So that's the first step, is to say that, ah, this is saying, this is saying that negative 10 is less or equal to 2x minus 3 is less or equal to 10. Whatever we're putting in there has to be between the 10s. We can't go outside of the 10s. And now, this is just like what we did on the previous page, isn't it? So what would we need to do? Add 3. So this would be negative 7 less or equal 2x less or equal 13. Then what? Divide by 2. So negative 3 halves less or equal x less or equal 6.5. Okay, then can you write this in interval notation? Okay, so how do you do it? Right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very good. Any question about this one? Okay. So now, this one I'm going to do just kind of abstractly because. Otherwise, there'd be too many details that we'd get lost in the rabbit hole. So rather, what I want you to consider is I want you to consider the similar inequality. Absolute value of u is less or equal to 10. So I'm just calling all the stuff in there. I'm, I'm going to call it u. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the two, the two bits here. I'm going to consider this one. Uh, I'm going to consider y is absolute value of u, and I'm going to draw it in red. And I'm going to consider y is 10, and I'm going to draw it in green. And what I want you to <coughs> remind me of is that what is the characteristic shape of absolute value? A V, right? So, so this is the Y axis, and this is the U axis, since we're talking about a, a, a different variable named U. So <coughs> this one looks like this. Okay. So then what does y is 10 look like? Horizontal line, above or below the origin, above. Okay. So then my question is, is do the red and the green ever intersect? They do. They intersect twice, once here and once here. Now, my question to you is, is what, what um, u would we have to plug in so the absolute value of u is 10? Not, not x, u. 10, right? If we were to plug in 10 for u, then the absolute value of u would be 10. That's one possibility, but what's the other? Negative 10. Negative 10 is another possibility. So now, in plain language, using red and green and above and below and everything like this, would someone please pronounce what this is saying? Right. Red is at or below green. So in this picture, is there anywhere that red is touching or below green. Can you see that red is below green between the tens? Everything between the tens. All of this.
Okay, so then do we pick up 10? Uh, do we pick up 10 and negative 10? We do, because it says less or equal, below or touching. So this right here, between the tens, corresponds to that step right there, between the tens. That's what they mean. Okay, then, if, I, if we were to change variables from u to 2x minus 3, all that would happen, all that would happen is that the, the v would be slightly more up. It would be bent up and then sh shifted over a little bit to the right. So it would be like taking the, the red and bending it and shifting it over a little bit so that this interval would shift to and shrink even to negative 3.5 to 6.5. It would be like it's casting a slightly different shadow on the ground. Okay, let's try another one. How about how about the absolute value of 3x minus 1 greater than or equal to 4? So again, let's think about this algebraically for a moment. And let's cover this up and ignore what's in there for the moment and just name it u. Let's name it u for a moment. Would it be okay to plug in u as 0? No, it wouldn't be okay. Because then we'd be asked, oh, would it be true, that is to say? Uh, well, no, because if you plugged in 0, is the absolute value of 0 greater than or equal to 4? It is not. So you can't plug in 0. Could you plug in 3? Three would not work. Three would not work. Could you plug in four? That would work because the absolute value of four is in fact greater than or equal to four. What about four million? Could you plug in four million? That would be fine. So do you see that if you, if you were to plug in something four or greater, then, then the inequality would be true. But that's not the full story. What else could also work? Negative 4 would work, wouldn't it? Because if you plugged in negative 4, then the absolute value would switch it back to positive, and then the inequality would be true. But if negative 4 works, then negative 5 works for the same reason. So, so to make this true, to make this true, you need to either plug in something greater than or equal to 4, or less or equal to negative 4. Okay, so now there's two possibilities, and they switch, and there's no, there's no easy way, there's no shorter way to write this. Students usually complain about this and say, oh, I don't like this one because I have to write so much. Well, one of the possibilities is that 3x minus 1 is less or equal to negative 4. This is the possibility on the left. What's the other possibility? three x minus one is greater or equal four. So two separate possibilities. And you have to write them both, and you have to solve them both. Okay, so add one, three x less or equal to negative three, divide by three. Wait a minute, for this one we're gonna divide by three, but that one's negative. Does that mean we switch? But this one's negative. Ah, but, it, but it, the only thing that matters is that we're dividing by 3. Okay. Okay, the other possibility. So 3x is greater or equal to 5, so x is greater or equal to 5 thirds. So two possibilities. Could you please write this in interval notation? So this one requires the union symbol. You can't, get, you can't get away from it. So the answer is negative infinity to negative 1 with a bracket, and then union bracket 5 thirds to infinity. So now, just very briefly and quickly, why should it be this way? Why should this one be so markedly different than the other one? The reason is because, again, if we plot the characteristic shape of 
absolute value as a V. And if I plot, and this one is Y is U, absolute value U. And then if we plot Y is 4, do they intersect? Yes, they intersect at 4 and negative 4. But now, now the inequality is reversed. Now this one is saying, where is, where is the absolute value above or touching the horizontal line? Or, if you like, where is red above or touching green? So where is red above or touching green? So by way of contrast, the answer here was between the tens. Whereas the answer here is going to be what? Outside the fours. Now it's all the stuff outside of them, not all the stuff inside. So can you see? that all the stuff outside the fours is that part and this part and they're two separate pieces. That's why the inequalities look like this and the interval notation looks like this. They can't be simplified because they're just two separate pieces. Okay, have a nice uh, Wednesday.